and welcome to yet another episode of Dr. Sin. Today we have with us Dr. Puneet Dhar who has been specialized in gastrointestinal surgery. Let's welcome him to the program. Welcome doctor. Thank you. First of all, could you just tell us your experience in this field? This is actually a reasonably rare tumor uh, which is uh, being increasingly found all over the world. Mm -hmm. uh, I got interested in this because we realized that many of these patients are di diagnosed uh, incorrectly. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we actually discover them after uh, surgery mm -hmm. uh, and the pathologist tells us that it's a neuroendocrine tumor. Uh, and since it's got a very varied uh, you know, uh, presentation and there are lots of treatment options available, mm -hmm. uh, I realized there's not much uh, known by a lot of physicians also in addition to the patients and a lot of myths about this. Okay, so what is neuroendocrine uh, tumor? So I don't know if you've heard of uh, Steve Jobs, the Apple uh, co-founder. There was a lot of uh, uh, news items saying that he died of pancreatic cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, this is a different disease. Uh, he, what he had was the neuroendocrine tumor and that's why he had such a long uh, survival. Pancreatic cancer is actually a very aggressive tumor. This is not the same. These tumors arise from neuroendocrine cells which can be there anywhere in the body. It's not just in the pancreas. Uh, it can be there in the adrenal glands, in the lungs. Mm -hmm. uh, but most commonly, uh, it is in the GI tract and the pancreas. That's why I get involved in uh -huh. this. Uh, but it, many other specialties are involved. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the importance of uh, you know uh, all the physicians and surgeons knowing about it because it could come to an endocrinologist, mm -hmm. it could come to a surgeon, it could come to a medical oncologist, mm -hmm. it could come to a general physician. We've had okay. some uh, patients of this who actually been labeled as uh, psychiatric because uh, nobody mm -hmm. could understand these symptoms. Mm -hmm. So it was first actually discovered uh, in the manner of what is functioning neuroendocrine tumors because as endocrine as you would realize is a uh, hormone producing tumors. Mm -hmm. So it was first realized that some of these are uh, producing hormones which have their effects in the body. For instance, all of us know about diabetes and insulin. So uh, one of the commonest tumors which are functioning is the insulinoma, mm -hmm. where an excess of this brings down the blood glucose levels. Okay. So the patient has hypoglycemia, can you know has mm -hmm. all the features of hypoglycemia, which looks sound like you know um, uh, which could present with um, you know trembling, mm -hmm. uh, with the palpitations, um, sweating, hunger. So you actually misunderstand that this person could even be psychiatrically imbalanced. Mm -hmm. So we've had patients who have been for 16 years, have been misdiagnosed as psychiatric illnesses or various other, you know, irritable bowel, various other symptoms. Mm -hmm. Another uh, tumor is VIPoma, which okay. is, uh, you know, which can present in other different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, it's vasoactive intestinal polypeptide and that can produce a diarrhea. Mm -hmm. uh, gastrinoma can produce ulcers. Okay. So it can produce a different variety of ways. Many of these uh, hormones can actually get inactivated because all these, we have uh, uh, enzymes in the body to break down these hormones. Mm -hmm. So it's possible that it actually breaks it down and we don't see these symptoms. Mm -hmm. So these could be non-functioning. Okay. And uh, in fact, now we are seeing many more of them and uh, world over we are recognizing this disease much more commonly. Okay, so what are the symptoms of this tumor? So like I said, the symptoms could be because of the functional elements, mm -hmm. it could be because of uh, a mass effect that it has be just by okay. virtue of uh, mm -hmm. these are the non-functioning or it can be when it spreads and uh, mm -hmm. involves some other part of the body. So the functioning ones uh, were, could be the insulin, if there's insulin excess, you get all the features of low blood sugar. Mm -hmm. uh, if it is gastrinoma, it's producing gastrin, a hormone which actually is there uh, in the part of digestion mm -hmm. uh, to actually produce acid. So we get features of huge, huge amounts of acid excess mm -hmm. uh, producing ulcers in all awkward locations in the body. Some of these can also be familial, so you can mm -hmm. have many people in the family suffering from the same disease. Okay. Uh, then the VIPoma, the vasoactive intestinal polypeptidoma can present with uh, you know, with uh, diarrhea and uh, mm -hmm. watery diarrhea, it has achlorhydria, hypokalemia, so some electrolyte imbalances can be there. Uh, others, other, many other hormones uh, can be manifested, some of the steroid hormones, uh, uh, so you can have Cushing's mm -hmm. syndrome, which is uh, because of steroid excess. Mm -hmm. uh, like this, many of these functioning tumors can be there. Okay. Uh, the non-functioning can present because of the mass effect. Just like mm -hmm. any other tumor, they can cause you pain. Uh, this, many of them are picked up on routine medical checkups, which are uh -huh. getting very common. Okay. Uh, we've had uh, last week. I had a doctor mm -hmm. uh, from Trichur who had, uh, uh, you know, uh, went for a routine checkup, and suddenly was found in his liver to have multiple uh, 
uh, tumors in his liver. Mm -hmm. Now, that's the typical kind of patient that uh, because normally when you get tumor in the liver, which is spread everywhere, the patient is very sick. But okay. here's this uh, doctor who walks in up saying there's nothing wrong with me. How can this be a cancer? Okay. So that's the typical kind of a cancer. Even when it is uh -huh. spread, I think the important message is that even when it's spread, it doesn't cause so many problems sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it co could cause a lot of problems. Uh, and it still could have a good prognosis in the long term. Okay. So how can we diagnose it? So uh, fortunately, we have a lot of uh, uh, things available for us. Uh, since these hormones are there, uh, for the functioning tumors, mm -hmm. we can actually look for the functioning hormones. So if we find uh, that the blood sugar is low, uh, we can actually look for the levels of insulin. Mm -hmm. So normally in the fasting state, insulin is low. You know, when we eat food, the insulin goes up yeah. uh, to digest the glucose. So in the fasting state, if we get a very high insulin, or in mm -hmm. the fasting state, if we get a very high gastrin, then we know it's a tumor, it's mm -hmm. abnormal. Okay. Uh, so many of these hormones can actually be tested and found to be positive. Uh, there are some other non-specific hormone or hormone-like things which are actually very important even for the non-functioning tumors. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the most important is the chromogranin. Mm -hmm. uh, so if this is elevated also, we can suspect that it is a neuroendocrine tumor. Okay. Uh, then getting the typical symptoms and looking on imaging. So uh, x-rays are not very useful, but uh, ultrasounds, CT scans, mm -hmm. MRI, they all have their typical features and, and uh, you know all these places that this can happen you get normal cancers as well so it's important to differentiate it from those so it okay. does have some features which a radio expert radiologist can make out uh, and it's important to realize this if you don't mm -hmm. if the mind doesn't know the you know the uh, uh, eye cannot see it uh, so we need to recognize these in these imaging techniques okay. we now have some uh, very new techniques uh, using nuclear medicine where mm -hmm. the tag a radionuclide molecule uh, to a hormone and since these uh, are hormone dependent tumors uh, this will go and you know cite itself so you can mm -hmm. actually uh, visualize these tumors light yeah. up on these kind mm -hmm. of imaging and we can see them wherever they are in the body okay. so we've had instances where the CT scans you know the latest scans actually don't show it up but mm -hmm. when we put this uh, isotopes it lights up wherever the tumors uh, spread even in the uh, lungs liver uh, bones anywhere that it is there okay. so we have a variety of uh, uh, diagnostic modalities mm -hmm. available for this. So now what are the treatment options given for the patients? So there are a lot of treatment options in this uh, disease. Uh, since it's a tumor, mm -hmm. uh, the most important curative treatment is actually surgery and trying and removing the tumor uh, as much as is possible. Mm -hmm. If it's localized, that's probably the best treatment available. Okay. If it's a hormonal tumor which is spread everywhere, we can give a variety of, uh, you know, uh, drugs to counteract that. So if it is, you know, symptomatic control is there. So if it's a gastrinoma, which is producing a lot of ulcers, we give uh, things like anti-ulcer mm -hmm. drugs, you know, drugs which reduce the acid uh, secretion. So it's symptomatic, it's mm -hmm. curative. And then we have these targeted uh, mm -hmm. drugs, which can be uh, either chemotherapy, mm -hmm. which is effective against the very malignant cells. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically it depends on how aggressive these tumors are. And okay. we have a pathological system of grading it. Mm -hmm. uh, so those which have a very low growth potential, which are called the G1, uh, some of them in very old people, we can actually wait and watch and see as they grow and as mm -hmm. they cause problems, only then remove it. Uh, especially if they have a lot of diseases that you know they subjecting mm -hmm. them to anesthesia and surgery could be dangerous but the mainstay the most important is actually surgery okay. if it is spread we try and remove where it is spread also mm -hmm. removing that will remove all the hormonal uh, excess symptoms as well okay. but if we can't do that we have a variety of other treatment options like mm -hmm. chemotherapy uh, we have newer techniques like PRRT that's uh, peptide receptor radionuclide therapy mm -hmm. where we can tag the same radionuclide molecule in the diagnostic part, we were using uh, radionuclide molecules with a very short half-life, so they mm -hmm. just show the emission, and uh -huh. that's picked up for diagnosis. Okay. Here we use long-term ones, which will actually go and attach into mm -hmm. the tumor mo molecule and actually give some radiation, which will destroy this uh, mm -hmm. tumor. Okay. So the advantage of this is that unlike radiation and the chemo, which affects every part of the body, this goes and targets only in the tumor and mm -hmm. destroys it. Okay. Uh, so that's one of the treatment uh, mm -hmm. in many parts of the country it was not available in fact in America it was not uh, FDA approved so Steve Jobs had to go to Europe to get treatment for that 
but it gave him a lease of life. We got the iPads uh, yeah. and the iPhones because of that, I think. Uh, uh, in India also, we have it in a few centers. Mm -hmm. We also hope to have it by next month uh, installed okay. in our center. So if cancer spreads, how bad it is? So yeah, this is a very important uh, thing. Unlike, uh, you know, whenever we say that spread cancer, uh, like the doctor I told you who just walked in, uh, it would be a death sentence. You know, it means that he, uh, normally we say if it's spread to the liver, it's a six months to live. But neuroendocrine tumors are not like that. Apple gentleman actually lived for nine or 10 years after he was diagnosed. Mm -hmm. So even with spread cancer, depending on the rate of growth and depending on what all he's, uh, you know, what all drugs he can actually receive, um, unfortunately also depending on his affordability because some of these as you know uh, as in anywhere else it does mm -hmm. tend to become more and more expensive but luckily in india we have a lot of uh, uh, you know uh, drugs available in india we have a lot of uh, uh, support from the government to produce drugs at a lower price mm -hmm. so we have these available at a lower price many of the companies actually are not making a profit on some of the cancer drugs okay. so we have uh -huh. uh, hope there as well okay so now what are the new exciting treatments for this uh, so, like I said, we have this uh, PRRTs there. Uh, we have so much, you know, these, uh, there are uh, hormones which can actually suppress this. And for some time, mm -hmm. we had this uh, uh, somatostatin. Uh, somatostatin means somato is, uh, you know, the, the growth and statin is to stop it. So, we had these uh, drugs which are uh, somatostatin analogs, which have mm -hmm. been available for actually uh, 15, 20 years. So, uh, unfortunately, these get destroyed very quickly in the body. Mm -hmm. So, we've had... Uh, uh, a development of analogs which are long acting. Okay. Uh, some of them have depot preparation so we can actually give them. Normally these are destroyed in seconds to minutes in the body so we have to give them a continuous infusion which they mm -hmm. can't obviously take it at home. Uh, so these have been developed as gels or you know various formulations that they can have a long term action over uh, uh, at least up to even a month. Mm -hmm. So that is one uh, uh, exciting thing that has uh, changed. Uh, we have newer drugs available, uh, newer chemotherapy uh, kind of drugs which target very specifically, you know, some receptors, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, everolimus and sunitinib have been shown to be effective against this drug in uh, uh, randomized trials. Okay. The gold standard in uh, medicine is we, we look for randomized trials and they've shown mm -hmm. benefit in this. Uh, all the somatostatin analogs have been shown, shown to have an effect as well for a mm -hmm. long time. So they're very good for these functioning tumors and mm -hmm. now even for the non-functioning tumors we found that they can actually slow growth in them. Mm -hmm. There are interferons which are good for these uh, some of these functioning tumors because they can also slow the growth. Mm -hmm. uh, we have newer uh, chemotherapeutic uh, drugs but more importantly we have something called personalized medicine coming okay. you can actually do gene studies uh, genetic mm -hmm. studies of the tumor each tumor has a you know a certain genetic uh, signature so we can try and analyze and now this is you know from science fiction is coming into practice and we have uh, we can analyze for a particular patient what is the genetic signature for that cancer mm -hmm. and uh, actually choose which drug so if he has a very high growth rate with certain things uh, we can give a drug called cisplatinum if it's if he's a certain type of gene mgmt mm -hmm. uh, we can uh, uh, you know expression is altered we can actually use temozolomide so uh -huh. like this there are a variety of things that we can see okay. that you know this patient will benefit from this so it's a more personalized medicine coming yeah, okay. up so that was nice talking to you thanks a lot for being a part of our program thank you so that was Dr. Punida with us. Until we meet next time, this is me, Naina, signing off. Take care.